I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and we are in the kitchen at Blunt Burgers and Bottles with their executive chef, Josh Ians. Josh, thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. You won Best Burger in Missouri by Food TV Network. Yeah, Food Network Magazine Yes. Uh, last year mm -hmm. actually voted us Best Burger in Missouri for our Inside Out Burger, which was a pretty big honor. Which actually we're going to prepare today Definitely. in your kitchen. Blanc is for the environment. It's yes. light and bright. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Why burgers? And why four Cordon Bleu chefs <laughs> making them, but why burgers? I say, why not? Well, that's a um, very good answer. So, um, Basically, we kind of created it because that's how we like to eat, and there wasn't a place in Kansas City that we had seen at that time that was gourmet burgers. You know, people are making now, they're taking things like burgers and tacos and putting a gourmet spin on it, and it's that's what people are eating, that's what people want. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of took something that was very classic, very American, and tried to reinvent it or tried to reinterpret it um, and create something special. So you did some pioneering and take tremendous care, which you can taste simply by coming in here and dining. You have the meat ground, especially for you. So what, what is different about the way the meat is ground here at Blanc Burgers? Well, we have it produced uh, especially for us. We have a custom blend that we designed with uh, a specialty meat company called Arrowhead here in, in the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, we tried to source, we tasted all kinds of beef. We tasted grass-fed beef from Kansas. We tasted other locally raised beef in Missouri, and we actually settled on a product called Vintage Natural Beef, which is raised in California. And what so is it fed? It's, it's corn and grain, and it actually does eat some alfalfa and stuff like that to help with their digestion, but I found that I personally, and a lot of people, the general public, didn't prefer the flavor of grass-fed beef in a burger, because it does taste very different. We have a custom blend, um, we use a coarse grind, obviously, we don't want a fine grind or a fine texture, you want to have a loose Texture. You don't want something overly packed mm -hmm. when you have a when you're trying to make a nice burger. And then the the, the meat, types of meat that we use specifically utilize different cuts of steak and stuff that give it a nice rich beefy flavor. Um, I think the most important thing uh, about this beef and why we chose to go with it is because it's an all natural program. Um, you know, the cattle are raised very humanely. There's no added you know growth hormones or anything uh, like that, and that was important to us. Yeah. So you make your own catch pickles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. When we were starting, I knew it was important. It was important for me to, when creating a burger, to look at every detail, every part that goes into it. So um, little things often overlooked, or you know, nobody makes their own ketchup anymore. Um, pickling and preserving and that kind of stuff is starting to come back, but it's gone away. Little things like that, I think, are what make our concept unique. You know, we blend our own whole grain mustard. Um, and the things that we weren't able to make in Westport, like the bread, because we didn't have the facility, we've sourced a great product from Farm to Market, which is a local bakery, and they produce a, a, a brioche, brioche bun. It's just it's a very, sense. It's actually a real brioche. It's very rich with nice butter and delicious eggs. Yeah, it's yes, really good. it's so. wonderful. So, not just about the burger itself, but all the other condiments that you would expect to go along with it. Now, we're going to be also preparing truffle fries. Mm -hmm. Is that really truffle oil? How are we? Yeah, well, we do it a little bit different. Um, we like to be over the top. So instead of drizzling truffle oil, doing something like that, we actually make a truffle butter where we take, we soften butter, we uh, combine it with truffle oil and truffle pieces to make a compound butter. And then um, when we make the fries, we, we gently melt it in a bowl and it releases some of the aromas. We toss it with the fries and they kind of, the two become one and it's... We're gonna see the, how that's done in just a yep. few minutes. Okay, the rest of the title is Blanc Burgers and Bottles. Mm -hmm. How did that enter into it? It was us wanting to be equally strong with the food and then the beverage presence. Obviously my background, uh, I'm a chef, Ernesto, uh, my partner, his background, is, he's been a bartender at the Capitol Grill for years. Um, and so we wanted to come, kind of combine, I guess, those two experiences to be equally as strong in the burgers and the bottles. The bottles means a few different things, but mostly it means beer. Uh, all of our beer is only in bottles. We don't have any draft beer. So hence the burgers and bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, we, our focus is beer. We, here at the plaza, we have about 150 core.
four beers on the menu and then we rotate through as much as 20 different seasonals or special beers at a time that we throw up on the chalkboard. Um, so the beers are main focus. Burgers and beer is a natural pairing. Everybody loves it. It's mm -hmm. delicious. It works well. Um, and, and your soda pop though, it's like something from 50 years ago. No high fructose corn syrup. Yep. We have, we have some vintage or kind of old school sodas like New Grape, mm -hmm. Nesbitt's, uh, Bubble Up um, that, that we really enjoy carrying. We carry a Mexican Coke, which is one of my favorites. It's actually still made the old fashioned way with cane sugar. So it also, the bottles refers to the sodas. We have about 30 or 40 gourmet um, sodas that are fun, different flavors. So how did you, how did you become a chef? What, what was your journey to this profession? Well, it happened in a, in a funny way. Actually, I just married Abby Jo, my wife, and we didn't really know kind of what we wanted to do. We were young, and uh, she had expressed a desire and wanted to go to culinary school, and I was like, that's crazy. That's, a, that's an awful idea, pretty much. And, uh, <laughs> so much more awful ideas. And it just kind of hit me one day. I just clicked and said, you know, wouldn't that be cool if we had our own restaurant one day? I just decided that that was a good idea. So we, we packed up, we moved to Arizona. Uh, we were living here at the time, moved to Arizona. Uh, went to Le Cordon Bleu school there called Scottsdale Culinary Institute. And um, really did well there, really had a good time, applied ourselves, learned a lot. And then from there just... You came back out. home. Yeah, we, uh, we were off in Georgia doing a, an internship for school as part of the program. Uh, got pregnant and decided to we needed to come back here and, uh, and raise Elliot here, so that's what we did. What keeps you inspired every day? I mean, you're making some of the same or similar things. What's your inspiration for this work, your ongoing inspiration for this work? I mean, a lot of the inspiration, I think, isn't always about creating something new and, and cutting edge and exciting every day as much as it is about trying to make, build a brand, maintain consistency in all the restaurants every day. Finding, finding more efficient ways to do that. As far as inspiration, we do we do different stuff. We do, in the restaurant, we do burger specials and fun stuff. Um, and then also outside of that, we get to do, did a Brewmaster's luncheon at Hard, where we got to do a three course lunch paired with beer, uh, cooking classes at Whole Foods, where we get to, about teaching people how to make a great burger. Um, when we're gonna start doing beer dinners and stuff in the restaurant, teaming up with breweries like Boulevard and Schlafly. So that's some fun stuff we can do that are, that's kind of a nice extension of the concept that allows us to have some fun. And it sounds like it also further connects you to the people who come here and enjoy your food. Definitely. Well, you know, I think we should enjoy the food right now. I think we should go into the kitchen and make your famous inside out burger and truffle fries, and you come with us. Cool, let's go. Josh Inns, and now we are in his kitchen here at Wong's Burgers and Bottles, about to make his signature dish, the Inside Out Burger and Truffle Fries. Yep. Okay, I'm your sous chef. Give me something extremely simple to do okay. and begin. What are we looking at well, here? This is this is essentially the makings of the Inside Out Burger. We have uh, eight ounces of ground beef that we formed into two four-ounce patties to make it easy, and then just a bunch of crumbled blue cheese. Uh, I find that. If you try to use something, you know, super fancy like a Maytag blue cheese or something caved, aged, ripened that's really strong, I think it's going to be overwhelming and it's not going to have the same melting quality because it's been aged, so there's less moisture. So I find just a basic blue cheese, like a creamy gorgonzola or something like that works really nice because it has a really good melting quality. Okay, so, all right, so, so patty's been cut in half. Take that, and basically what we like to do is just cram as much blue cheese in there this as we can. serious blue cheese. So we don't want and people to be And that's the inside out because the cheese is on the inside. And then, uh, and then it comes surprise. out. A little surprise, yeah. And then it comes out. Yet. So cram as much in there as we can. We don't want people to be disappointed. And then we take the second four ounce patty and then we're just gonna, we're just gonna make the two become one. It's like a good marriage. The two mm -hmm. become one. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of come around the edge right here and just kind of crimp it. Okay, because we don't want the cheese to come out just yet, not till the first bite. And then at that point, then we just kind of collect it back together and then I'll turn it over. And then why don't you go through and crimp on that I'll side. I'll do exactly what you did. So just from looking at it, you're not going to see any cheese. And your seasoning, I see a salt and pepper. About what ratio salt to pepper when you prepare this mixture? 
That's usually like a 70-30 kind of deal. Um, okay, what kind of salt do you use? We use kosher salt. Um, and fresh cracked pepper, I'm sure. Yep. And it's a black pepper. That's right. Okay, chef. You can get fancy with it and do white pepper and black pepper and all that kind of stuff. The only thing you want to make sure is you don't have any, oh. any cracks in this. You want to make sure you're sealed up top and then that you're sealed on the edge. And that looks pretty good. And, and if you're not a gorgonzola or blue cheese fan, obviously you can substitute out other cheeses. What would you suggest? Absolutely. I mean, you can have, you know, at home, you can have a lot of fun with this. We've done a burger stuffed with fresh goat cheese, which is really gooey but good. Uh, we've done brie. To me, wow. anything that's got yeah. nice flavor, that has a good melting quality, is a good candidate. Uh, we'll I guess a mozzarella, you could use you that totally if you do wanted mozzarella. To. Okay. You do kind of like a caprese type burger. Um, of course, the famous stuffed burger is the Juicy Lucy, famous from up north, which uses an American cheese. Um, but you can do anything you want. Anything you want, just so long as you keep it totally uh, enclosed in yeah. the meat. And so do you season now? Yeah, why don't you take it and just generously season. Uh, we'll season both sides. Is that too generous? It's good, just make sure it's nice and spread out. And then we throw it on the grill. So this you can do outside on your grill. If you're cooking inside and you don't have a grill like this, a pan yeah, or? If you have a nice cast iron pan, the idea is to hold the heat. The cast iron actually will make a great burger. Get a nice, you'll get a nice salty crust on the outside. It works well because it holds the heat. So it, it's so adjusting the heat on your home range, what, medium, medium, medium high? Definitely medium, medium high. high. You're gonna wanna start with a hot pan, but you don't want it to be too hot because the thing with the burger is you want to make sure you get enough doneness in the middle. Um, you don't want it to be very in the middle, but then be nice and caramelized on the outside. So you don't want to go, I'd say, nice, medium, medium high, especially if you have a thick burger. Okay. You know, so medium, medium high. So the hamburger's on the grill, and now we're preparing the bun, and you use a brioche bun, yep. but whatever your favorite. And to me, this is the just as important as finding a good meat is finding a good hamburger bun. Mm -hmm. I think too often people source a really good, you know, farm raised, small batch, yada, 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 and they put it on Wonder Bread. And so it kind of defeats the purpose. So to have a good vehicle, something that has good flavor, you can see it's got nice color, it's soft, but it still stands up to the burger. Mm -hmm. And we use a locally produced brioche, which I love because it's really rich and delicious, so. So if you don't have a griddle like this at home, what, how, what would you suggest? And you could toast it. If you're doing it inside, you could toast it in your cast iron skillet okay. before you put your burger on. Or if you're doing it outside on the grill, just throw it on the grill. Throw it on the grill. Yeah. Okay. We sure. just put down a little bit of oil. What kind of oil? Vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. Let's get a nice little toast on the inside of the bun. Just kind of wakens it up. So we're going to leave that there. What's the next thing we're going to do for this signature hamburger? Well, All right. So now you're going to jump. So sometimes when we right, Sometimes we'll put a little dome over the burger to help it cook. It creates a little oven in there and helps the burger to cook through a little more evenly. What? If we don't have a little dome, what would you suggest for the home cook? I mean, you just you, put a lid on it? Yeah. Okay. But, I, I mean, a lot of times at home, you don't need to do that. If we, if we have a burger that you want to be maybe more well done, you want to cover it, but a lot of times you just need to leave it in the open air. And you would do, and you would cover it if you chose to before you turn it over? Yeah. Yes. Okay. This one should be ready to turn here. Some chefs uh, like to season their meat before, some prefer to season it after. I'm always a season it before guy because I like the salt to get cooked into the crust. And I understand it just is more, it's a greater depth of yeah. flavor. Sometimes okay. if you're doing something, a nice meat, maybe that you're slicing, you're going to want to have a nice finishing salt, maybe like a third of cell over it. Mm -hmm. That's different, but I still think it's nice to have it in the crust. For the burger. Yeah. So this is what we're looking for on the bun. You got a beautiful toast here. Mm -hmm. You got some color, kind of awakens up all the deliciousness that's in there. Okay, and now for the fries. We're going to talk about the process of fries. Of course, we're not giving away the secret recipe for our truffle fries. However, there are some basic things to know about making french fries. You have cut these uh -huh. and then soak them overnight in, so in a salt water solution. And now what? If we come in in the morning, after they've soaked, picked up a little bit of flavor, we uh, drain off the water and then we do what's called blanching. 
um, proper french fries are cooked two times. If you've ever had french fries that are gummy or not super crispy, uh, usually sometimes they're good they're fried once. So what we do is we blanch them in the morning about 325 degrees, which cooks the potato through, um, but you don't want to get a lot of color on it. We take it out at that point, cool it down, um, and then it's ready to go for, for dinner service. And what we do is heat the oil up hot, about 375 degrees, and then you're gonna drop them down just for a minute or two to crisp them up, but then you still have the moist potato on the inside. Okay, so if you're entertaining at home, you can prepare this in the morning, and when your guests arrive, last minute throw it in for the last time. Exactly. And you could do that in a Dutch oven on, on a stove top. Exactly. But you wanna measure that it's 375. Yeah, you'd wanna have a, a candy thermometer yeah. or, a, or a thermometer that went up that high just to be safe. Okay. So. Um, these are ready. They want to be cooked. And then we just go right into the basket. I mean, pretty simple. Fry it. And you had mentioned earlier that when when you first cut it, you want to rinse off the starch. Is this a exactly. russet potato? Yep. Yeah. Idaho russet potato. They make really great French fries. Yep. The, yeah. the starch content. But what we find sometimes is that there can be too much starch. So we like to rinse some of that starch off. Just as if you were making a potato chip or anything else like that, you don't want that starch to burn. So if we had a big bowl of water and we wanted to soak it overnight with salt, in what ratio salt to water? You just want to add just a little bit just to season it. You can add anything you want. Be careful because you're working with hot grease. Put them in the bowl and while they're still warm, we're going to add seasoning to them. Yep. And we actually have a special seasoning that we developed with Salt, pepper, and some other secret little ingredients. And secret ingredients. That I can't tell you about. But we you know, them. you could do some chopped garlic in here at this time if you wanted to. Yeah, I you better. Do, uh, this one looks like it needs my. You attention. could do fresh herbs, rosemary, oh. garlic, anything you wanted, really. Now's the time to do it when it's still when hot, hot. When it's Absolutely. hot. So and that's when you add your seasoning. And we actually use a finer grain salt. We don't use kosher salt for the fries because we find that um, the, the small salt can dissolve and the kosher salt won't because it's a bigger crystal. made ketchup. Put a little and bit of that know, on top that of that is just a sweetness and intense tomato, tomato flavor you can't get from a jar. Absolutely. And then this is a whole grain mustard. It's a mustard that we plan uh, in-house. And actually, I need to show you the squeeze bottle. I'm very proud of it. It has three spouts. So Wonderful. Dressing it. Super easy. Um, Another thing I think special about our burgers is the lettuce. As you can see, this is beautiful. It's, uh, it's a hydroponic bib lettuce. It's uh, a very nice product that we use. Um, so it's delicate. Yep. It's a delicate flavor. As you can see, some of our cheese is trying to escape. We'll plop that down right there. That's an amazing burger. And the next ingredient is uh, applewood smoked bacon. You know, nice. A, bacon's actually a food group as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Get a nice thick slice and from your grocery store. And I noticed those are... are easier you can do larger quantities at one time and if you're doing it at the house you don't have to worry about the mess on your stove and the grease splattering Just so we put parchment yep, paper down parchment paper down lay out your bacon and if you want a super nice flat piece then you can put another sheet pan on the top and bake it and it'll bake it takes longer but it'll bake nice and perfectly flat and obviously you can store that in the refrigerator and heat it up in advance and then Top it with the onion ring that we just cooked. We make these fresh every morning in the restaurant. They're a big labor of love. We, we make a beer batter with Boulevard Pale Ale, uh, which is a great lo local beer that I love. Um, and the batter is all beer, a little bit of flour, cornstarch, kind of tempura style. And um, they're really good, it has a really nice crunch. So you get these ready and then fry them off? To order. To order. Yeah. This is the inside out burger. That's it. And then we got a fun little presentation. You know you do. We, we say we serve the fries a la carte, <laughs> and uh, we really mean it. With these little grocery carts, stack the fries up in there. Looks wonderful, Chef. I think we better pair this with some beer and a soft drink. That sounds great. Let's get out of the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah.
Chef and I have just prepared the Inside Out Burger with the truffle fries. What do we drink with it? To answer that, I'm talking to the bar director, David McMullen. Hello. And also Josh is joining us, and I see you have two selections. Tell us about them. Uh, well, the two selections that we have, uh, we have chosen a 2009 Boulevard Cezanne Brett. Uh, the reason why we decided to go with this beer, uh, not only because it's a local beer um, and it's been aged for a year, um, but uh, we feel like the, the flavor components go really well with the blue cheese that are stuffed inside the burger and with the bacon uh, and all the components of the inside out burger that we're going to be serving with. Today. So what are we tasting with this? It is light. It's going to be, it's going to, it's, it's a nice ale. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a real, like an Auburn type color. Uh, it's, it's a little bit cloudy. Um, you're you're going to get uh, some like, like orange peels, banana, clove type of flavors that come from it. Uh, maybe even a little hint of pepper. That sounds delicious. Now I noticed, and what temperature should we be storing this beer at? Um, traditionally, uh, as uh, Josh referred to earlier, cellar temperature would be good. Temperature. Um, you can keep it fairly cold, but uh, beers like the uh, uh, like these artisan beers from Boulevard are very good if, if you can drink them uh, or even store them at about 55, 60 degrees. Okay. Now, for those of us who want a non-alcoholic option, mm -hmm. what are you proposing? Uh, we have actually... Uh, come across Soda V. These are naturally brewed sodas made here locally by uh, Get Real Food Company. It is a double Thai basil clove soda. Yes. We're going to drink it because it's really delicious and um, it's it's special. It's a couple guys started out in their basement in Kansas City uh, making soda the old fashioned way. There's It's all natural ingredients. Uh, even the bubbles, the carbonation is produced naturally. So there's, they're not forced carbonating it. It's actually through natural yeast and bacteria mm -hmm. that they're creating this. Uh, it's all natural ingredients. They use organic uh, products when, when possible. So there's a little bit of uh, lactobacillus bacteria, which for kind of the nerdy people, that gives it a sour type mm -hmm. flavor. So you get a sour and a sweet. And it's good for your tummy. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. And it's uh, a lot of these are ginger beer based. Mm -hmm. So you get that nice ginger kind of heat in there with it. And it's just a really you know, product. We're doing the double Thai basil with the inside out burger because what are we wanting to have happen with those two flavors with that pairing? Well, out of, out of all the sodas we have from them, I, this one I think is the, has the most pronounced flavor. And so to stand up to the flavors of the bacon and the blue cheese, um, I think it would, it would complement it. Some of the other ones might get lost, a little more delicate. So, and you would chill this like you would yeah. any other soda. And because it's a natural product, you do have to be careful. Sometimes when you open it, it'll, it'll go a little crazy because it is a natural product. So, but yeah, cold is good. Okay, and I noticed that you have selected, obviously, a regular soda glass, but this is a, not the usual beer glass. And why this glass? No, it's not. Um, one of the reasons why for this glass is a it does go along with the Boulevard. It is their uh, their their logo glass that they, that they use for this series of beers. Um, second is if you notice the wide the wide mm -hmm. nose with with the uh, uh, with the bending of the glass, it really releases the flavor. Um, you can really smell. You get the you get the aromas while you're drinking it. Um, you can also help warm it up by cupping it. Uh, all kinds of things like that. All right, so now for the, the final test, gentlemen. We've made the food, we've selected the pairings, and we're going to ask celebrity taster Christopher Elbow to taste the food and taste the beverages just to make sure they're okay. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and you are in the kitchen of Blanc Burgers and Bottles. Chef Josh and I have just prepared their inside out burger with truffle fries. We've gone to their beverage pairing maker, and he has suggested a special artisanal beer and soda. And to make sure that this has all been prepared and paired properly, we have invited a man of great discerning taste, Christopher Elbow, known for your chocolates, so chocolatier, are you prepared to do the job? Are you prepared to I taste? I am prepared. I feel very lucky to be here. Well, thank you for taking time to be with us. My pleasure. Chef, where? Oh, here we go. Yeah. All right. Now, as we set this down, yes. it's our custom to 
advise you to cut it in half first because we have had projectile cheese <laughs> incidents at the restaurant. So, and then of we course with our house-made pickle. And uh, over here we have the truffle fries mm. with our chipotle aioli, homemade ketchup, and our whole grain mustard. That I actually prefer the mustard with the truffle fries the best. So Okay, we will take that under advisement and to drink. Yeah. David, what are we going to drink? We have a 2009 Boulevard Saison Bread. And this is an, art, art, it didn't explode. Well, it did a little, but that's okay. Just a little bit, it's a little bit happy. The wild yeast really likes to uh, get on camera. Mm -hmm. Well, it wanted equal time. Exactly. Mm. It's gonna be a little bit warm, so it's gonna be a little bit foamy. And that's, and that's by design, because you serve that not at room temperature, but... No, but uh, around 50 degrees to uh, 55. You can probably go up as warm as 60 degrees. Okay, because it brings the flavors out more. Correct. And then for those of us who would, who would choose a non-alcoholic beverage, you have recommended... Uh, we have our double top basil clove by Soda V. smells amazing. We felt like this one would pair very well with the blue cheese. These are all natural sodas, and you will see a little bit of the uh, clove I right there floating the around. There. Yes, do not be discouraged by that. It is supposed to be there. Okay, now we need to cut our, we've been instructed we've been to instructed cut our hamburger in half, and I'm kind of a mustard girl. I would girl. take his advice. Okay, so we don't have projectile cheese experiences. Okay, now I you have to be the first taster because right. that's your job. Yeah, you can smell, as soon as you cut into it, you can smell. So, he's not gonna talk. I can't <laughs> in talk that stage. No, the, the quality of the meat, you can tell right off the bat, mm -hmm. is exceptional. And then the earthiness of the blue cheese, the creaminess uh, kind of cuts into that. You have a crispy onion ring, so there's textures going on. Um, but the flavor is fantastic. I'm going to have to take a bite now. I'm excited. I can't wait any longer. Oh my God. So, what do you right. taste? Okay. That's, an, that's an artisanal beer. This is great. So it's very, it's very fruity and floral, slightly sweet, mm -hmm. which is perfect. And in my opinion, it cuts kind of the fattiness of the cheese and the hamburger and, and goes perfectly. Because that's an, those are intense flavors. Yeah, and this, this uh, you know, it doesn't drown out the flavors, but it's kind of a nice palate cleanser mm -hmm. in between bites, mm -hmm. I think. To, mm -hmm. Okay, so you yeah, need to great. take one more bite, and then you need to try the non-alcoholic beverage that David has suggested that we include with that in. Yeah, this sounds fascinating. Mm. Locally made. See, that's that's part of the charm of this meal is the care that the chefs have taken to select locally made products. They're fresh. Many of them are organic, sustainable, and so what very, is that? Very, very tart, the basil comes through really nicely. Mm. Cuts into the flavor of the, the blue cheese and stands up well. I have to tell you, when I heard this suggestion, I thought, okay, I'm up for unique. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Yeah, this is one of the best sodas I've ever had. I, I got that Fantastic. little book. Would not have imagined it with this. Oh wait, truffle, Can't fries. The truffle fries. And I know no. this is the signature recipe, but I will say that Chef recommends the truffle fries with mustard. mustard. So we don't want to disappoint Chef. Oh, the the aroma of the uh, the truffle is overwhelming. Oh. What 
Yes. I can eat. A, I can eat a lot of those. Yeah. Why don't we just move in? We can just, you know, stay here and and you know ask for food every day. Perfect. <laughs> this is amazing. This is just wonderful. One of our local treasures is Blanc Burgers and bottles. And Christopher Elbow, thank you for joining uh, thank us. You. My pleasure. And thank you for being with us in the kitchen.